This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We end today by looking at a major education victory in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where parents, teachers and activists mounted a successful campaign to reclaim control of their local public school system. Last summer, organizers decided to challenge the School Reform Commission, a five-person, state-backed body implemented in 2001 by then-Pennsylvania Governor Mark Schweiker, after he declared the city's education system financially distressed. Under the commission, dozens of Philadelphia public schools closed, and the city saw a spike in charter schools. Community groups responded by forming a coalition called Our City, Our Schools to pressure Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf and Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney to return control over the school district to local voters. Last month, Philadelphia Mayor Kenny heeded the organizers' demands and called for the dissolution of the commission. This is Kenny addressing the Philadelphia City Council. If we do not have quality schools in every neighborhood, the people who have helped to reverse the city's decades of population loss will not stay. The children whose families cannot afford to leave will be unprepared to compete in the 21st century economy. Businesses will not come to Philadelphia, and those that are here won't have the local talent pool to grow. The city's poverty and crime rates will remain stagnant, or they will worsen. So today, after nearly two years of careful consideration and research, 98 school visits, and conversations of 158 principals, and countless parents, teachers, and business leaders, I am officially calling on the members of the School Reform Commission to vote to dissolve at their next scheduled meeting. So, at the end of the School Reform Commission, Philadelphia School District returns to city control after 16 years of state management. For more, we go to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where we're joined by two guests, Helen Gim, longtime community activist, now Philadelphia City Council member, who helped lead the fight to take back the schools, and Kendra Brooks, part of the Our City, Our Schools Coalition, as well as Parents United, has been organizing in her North Philadelphia neighborhood for a decade. She's the parent of two children who attend Philadelphia District schools. Let's Let's begin with City Council Member Helen Gim. Uh, talk about why you got involved with this struggle and its national significance now that Philadelphia public schools are back in the hands of Philadelphians. Sure. Um, thank, first of all, good morning, uh, Amy and Juan. It's really great to join you here. Um, and this is a really great moment for Philadelphia and for education observers all across the country. Sixteen years ago, the city of Philadelphia was the, probably the largest city to be taken over by the state of Pennsylvania at the time. It was sold to us as a, a massive effort to privatize whole chunks of the city uh, school system, to turn it over to one for-profit entity in particular, Edison Schools Incorporated, which no longer exists as a school manager, and, um, you know, to become what, uh, what, what would eventually be a 16-year experiment on black, brown, and immigrant children that was not guided by education research, that included things like high-stakes testing, um, mass school closings, uh, reckless charter expansion, um, and, the, and, and the like. And um, in response over the 16 years, the thing that became the most encouraging aspect of Philadelphia's fight back was that all of us pulled together, um, parents in particular. I was a new mom. Um, at the time, and uh, was sending a child into kindergarten, became very active. I was a former public school teacher, um, and we were very active. Community members came together, educators, parents came together to push back an, against an agenda that was not fundamentally centering um, the needs of young people, that was promoting ideas that were not backed by research and were hurting far too many children, especially children of color in Philadelphia, and that we um, needed to chart a different path. And uh, the way to do that was to form a broad-based coalition amongst folks and to use all of our resources to invest in one another and to invest into a big fight. And that was mirrored nationally. Um, and 16 years later, uh, we stand together and we watch the uh, state takeover go down. And we will we will build a, a new people uh, representative school board um, out of it, and and we'll keep fighting. And Kendra Brooks, would you talk about uh, what uh, the state control has meant uh, to uh, the public schools, uh, your direct experience with your children uh, the, uh, over the failure of state management of your schools? Um, I think for me, once again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I 
through this process, so I earlier they mentioned that I have two children that are currently in public school, but I have four children. My oldest is actually 27 and my youngest is nine. So I've been through this process from the beginning. Um, educating children in this public school system um, and understanding what this takeover meant um, when we begin to see the loss of resources, the loss of teachers, the increase of class sizes. Um, our local public school went from a K to five to a K to eight, and we still lost 27 teachers. Um, those are the things that directly affected me and my community when I think about what this takeover, state takeover, meant to schools here in Philadelphia. At the time, I was only concerned about my my public school, you know, when it was relevant to me and my children. But as I began asking around and connecting with organizations and began doing more advocacy work, I realized that. It, it was affecting schools throughout North and Northwest Philadelphia and throughout the city as well. Um, and it wasn't beneficial. So a part of it was that the state was supposed to come help turn around the financial situation of the school. And we still continue to see um, schools starving of resources, teachers, uh, nurses, uh, building conditions are poor. Uh, resources for children with special needs, resources to help immigrant families, all those things continue to be depleted um, under this state, this state takeover. So I don't understand what the purpose of the experiment was when it really didn't work. It really didn't benefit the children in Philadelphia at all in any kind of way. And how were you able to build uh, a grassroots movement that eventually pressured the mayor and the state to, uh, uh, to uh, return to local control? Um, as you begin to talk to families and communities, like going to school communities, talking to parents in the schoolyard, begin talking about the loss in education from what their experience was in education to their children's experience in education, and start sharing facts um, about actually what's happening in schools around the city and allowing parents to understand it's not just your school, that this is a citywide effort and we all need to get involved. Um, people were willing to stand up and fight for their schools, for other schools, for schools in their communities, and connect with other parents around the city to make sure that we have a quality education system for all kids, because we should be able to move around the city, and it, you shouldn't go Every neighborhood school should be a quality neighborhood school. And I think once we began having that conversation with parents and really showing them what's missing, I think a lot of times parents are not inside the building and realize that it wasn't a nurse or that there wasn't a counselor until you need it. So if you don't need it, you don't know it's not there. So once we start saying that this is happening district wide, like all schools are suffering and we need you to join in the fight, a lot of parents was like, I'm willing. Um, Helen Gim, this is a big uh, day after election. That's Alabama election. But um, there were major, re um, significant results out of November election, Larry Krasner becoming the district attorney. Now, I was wondering if you can talk. You were just recently at an event speaking about education, not incarceration, how this take back of the Philadelphia schools fits into this picture. Uh, you know, one of the best things about uh, the the pushback around the public education, um, you know, the state takeover of public education, the privatization of public education, is that eventually, over a period of time, because so many of us were coming together from different uh, places, we were unifying around a broad-based movement around our public schools, we were really talking about our children, our neighborhoods, our families, and the city. So it became much bigger than an education fight. It actually became very much a unifying force that pulled together grassroots activists that were involved with youth, youth justice work, that had been involved with the criminal justice system, that were looking at questions about politics and integrity, that were educators, of course, but were fundamentally engaged with a lot of uh, deep-seated, deep-rooted issues in our city, including immigrants, sanctuary cities, um, the fight for, uh, you know, the pushback against cutting, um, you know, efforts at anti-poverty programs. So all of these forces came together and became this really broad-based movement. In particular, the, the education movement and the criminal justice movement so closely aligned together, because so many of our young people are um, are involved in dysfunctional systems. So we've got one out of five high school students who are either um, involved in the criminal justice or DHS, our Department of Human Services, 
Um, and that requires us to think very differently. So when we're talking about our public schools, and if people come in and give us solutions that only talk about increasing test scores or cutting away um, extraneous services like um, counselors and nurses or after-school programs or support services because they're not focused in on the basics that would allow them to better pass, uh, you know, a, a, a test score that's crafted out of Princeton Review or out of K-12 or one of these other types of uh, multinational companies, then parents are going to push back. Um, we're going to talk about the realities of what our young people live with are living with today. We're going to talk about the reality of access to services and support services in our city that make a huge difference in changing young people's lives. So this fundamentally became much bigger than an education movement. It aligns and Helen, very closely uh, with— yeah. Uh, Helen Gim, uh, we just have about 30 seconds, but I wanted to ask you, in terms of the impact, there's a Senate bill in Pennsylvania that would make uh, the use of uh, private vouchers uh, and, uh, charters and the growth of charter schools even greater. Could you talk about that and your efforts on that? Sure. The voucher issue has come up multiple times in Pennsylvania. It's been also defeated multiple times. But the difference that we've got right now is that um, the movement in Philadelphia spread across the state. Uh, the movement that, that took down the state takeover also took down a sitting governor. Um, in 2014, it uh, took on um, the, the um, politics of moneyed ed reformers in 2015 municipal race. Um, and we're following closely to make it clear that education is a political issue for us. Um, it's going to be involving uh, Kendra, myself. Um, this is not just an isolated political fight in Harrisburg. Mm -hmm. This is speaking directly to communities all across the state of Pennsylvania. And those um, legislators who want to we have five um, seconds. try to pretend that, you know, that vouchers are going to sell the day are going to find out that it's a losing battle. We want to thank you both for being with us, Helen Ginn, Philadelphia City Council member, and Kendra Brooks with Parents United in Our Cities, Our Schools. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! produced by Renee Feldstein, Augusta, Nermeen Shea, Carla Wills, Laura Gattis, Dina Sam Alkoff, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.